Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, let's talk about managing plugins for Logic. And I'm not even talking about the plugin manager inside the application, but instead digging into the weeds, finding the correct folder, housing the correct plugin format that Logic Pro actually uses, audio units, not VST, and let's clean house. Let's get rid of some stuff that you're no longer using so your machine is running clean and mean. So we'll walk through the steps of installing a couple plugins. We'll even customize the installer. So once again, we're installing just the format that Logic Pro uses. And then we'll dig into the weeds, find some plugins I'm no longer using, and let's get rid of them. Let's dig into it. All right, our quest begins with installing some plugins on my Mac. There's basically two ways you can go about installing plugins. And the first way is to download a specific installer for a specific plugin from the developer's website. So right down here in the dock, I have Safari open and I've already logged into my Valhalla account. Valhalla DSP is well known for its very cost-effective and fantastic sounding reverbs and delays. And as you can see, there are different installers for the individual plugins. I'm going to download, let's say the Valhalla delay plugin. A new tab pops up, the installer is downloaded to my Mac. And if I go to the downloads folder, right down here in the dock, you can see the Valhalla delay DMG file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and we can close down Safari for right now. And this should be pretty straightforward. I think most of us are pretty familiar with installing applications and plugins. So I'll just double click on the package. And from here, I'll follow the prompts. So we're gonna continue. All right, so right here, you have a couple different options. First, you could change the install location of the plugins. So there is a potential for me to install this plugin on a separate volume, but we can see that there's a warning that actually Valhalla delay can't be installed on this disk because this volume needs to be running the OS 10.8 or newer. And honestly, you don't really want to install your plugins anywhere but your Mac hard drive. There's a very specific set of folders that Logic Pro and any other DAW is going to look at to determine which plugins you have available. And if you install your plugins on a separate hard drive, Logic, everything else is just not going to see your plugins. So it's not really worth it. All right, so I'll click continue. The next option you have is to customize the installation. And I personally do choose to customize my installs for plugins. Now, right here, you can see that Valhalla Delay is going to install a VST version of the plugin, AAX, VST3, AU, as well as presets for the plugin. Now, a lot of folks mistakenly like to use the term VST for their plugins and instruments in Logic Pro. And I only say mistakenly because Logic Pro uses a certain type of plugin, the Audio Units plugin. It's a container or format that was developed by Apple. And while other DAWs out there like Studio One and Ableton use multiple formats of plugins such as VST as well as AU, Logic Pro only uses the AU format. For those curious, VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology. This is a plugin format that was developed by Steinberg Media back in the 90s. And there's been updates to the format, so that's why we see both VST as well as VST3. AAX, on the other hand, is the Avid Audio Extension format that is specific to Pro Tools. So unless you're using Pro Tools, it's not going to be applicable. So I personally choose to disable installing the VST versions as well as AAX version because I only use Logic Pro. I don't bounce between other DAWs and recording software. So... Just keep in mind, if you bounce between Logic Pro and Ableton or Studio One or Pro Tools or anything else, you yourself may want to install these other formats. I'm just not going to in this video. Right, so let's go ahead and install. All right, the installation was successful. Now, the second way that you can install plugins on your Mac is by downloading an installer hub, so to speak, from a particular developer, which will handle downloading, installing, and uninstalling plugins for that particular developer. So right down here in the dock again, I have the Slate Digital Connect download application. I've signed into my Slate account and these are the plugins that I have available to download or update on my system. All right, so you can see for most of these plugins, I have the option to install because they're not installed on my system right now. For some plugins, I have the option to update an already installed plugin and some plugins say up to date. So they're installed, there's no update to download. So if I wanted to install a plugin, I simply just click on install. Before I do that though, I just wanna point out, if I go to my preferences and click, some installers may offer a plugin format preference. So I could actually say, hey, only install the AU version. I don't need the VST2 or 3 or AAX versions of these plugins. But for this example, I'm going to disable the AU preference. So I will download all four of these plugin formats to my Mac. 
All right, so let's go back up to my products and I'll go ahead and download the FGX2 limiter here. Just like that, Slate Digital Connect downloads the plug into my system, it's installing it. And now I can use this plugin in Logic Pro. All right, so we've installed these plugins, but where did they go? Where on your Mac are these plugins living? There are a couple ways that you can go about this. The easiest one in my mind is simply to go up to the top menu bar. And with the finder in focus, you click on the go menu, then hold option on your Mac's keyboard to bring up the library and click. From here, the finder pops up inside the user library. As noted here, we're inside the user folder for my Mac. And from here, we're gonna look inside the library folder under audio, under plugins, and inside this plugin folder, you should see other folders for different plugin formats. Now your situation may be different if you have multiple users using the same Mac, but I personally never see plugins installed in these folders inside my user library. But I wanted to point this out in case you do have plugins installed here. But what's more typical for me anyways, is that plugins are installed in the global library folder for my Mac system as a whole. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna go past the plugins, the audio folder, the library folder inside my user account. And we're gonna go to this library folder, which is the first level down inside the Mac HD. And if it helps, I prefer the column view. I think this makes a lot more sense as I'm digging into my Mac system. You may feel different, that's fine. So I'll click on the audio folder inside the global library folder, then the plugins folder. And once again, you'll see different folders for different plugin formats. And if we navigate through some of these options, and here I should actually start to see plugins available on my Mac. Now the components folder houses all of the audio unit plugins, the AU plugins that Logic Pro is going to use. And I'll just start to scroll through. I've got quite a few. Right at the bottom, you can see all my Valhalla plugins, including my Valhalla delay that I installed. Further up, if we take a look at the Fs, we should be able to see the FGX that was installed from the Slate Digital Connect app. All right, so that's where the audio unit plugins live. Audio unit plugins have the suffix dot component. That's how you know it's an audio unit plugin. And as you can see in the VST folder, I have a few plugins and I don't even need these plugins. There's Slate Digital that downloaded the FGX2 as a VST and VST3. And just to prove to you that I don't need the VST format, I'm gonna move this folder to the trash. But I would recommend because Slate Digital Connect offers the option to uninstall its plugins, I would go that route. I would use the application and not just throw these plugins in the trash. But if there is no uninstaller, well, that's your option just to move to the trash. All right, so now let's open up Logic Pro to view the Valhalla Delay plugin as well as the FGX2 plugin. All right, we're in Logic Pro. Let's load some of these audio effects. So if I go to the Slate folder under Audio Units, there's the FGX2. If I load it up, and as you saw, I deleted the VST versions of this plugin and it opens in Logic Pro because Logic uses the AU format, the Audio Units plugin. All right, let's now load up the Valhalla Delay. But as you can see, I'm missing something here. I don't have the Valhalla folder. So how do I load Valhalla Delay? Well, that's because we need to reveal the plugin using the Plugin Manager by going to Logic Pro, down to Settings, to Plugin Manager. Under the Developer section, we can see the plugin has been successfully validated by Logic Pro. Logic analyzes and sees it. I just need to reveal the plugin to see it in Logic Pro. So there we have it. Awesome. So now we're at the point of how do you uninstall plugins from your Mac that you're no longer using? Now, admittedly, plugins don't take up much space on a Mac. If we go back to the Finder, and if I click on a VST, you can see it's 52.1 megabytes. That's not very much, it's pretty small. If we go to the Components folder, again, of plugins that Logic Pro actually will be using, this plugin right here only takes up 8.7 megabytes. So if you don't wanna delete your plugins, but you just wanna hide them from the view in Logic Pro just to tidy things up, you can, of course, go to Logic Pro Settings, back to the Plugin Manager, and right here, you just disable the use column for that plugin. Click done. And we still see the Valhalla delay, but if I try to load it from the audio unit section, 
I no longer see Valhalla delay as an option to load. But if you prefer to delete plugins from your Mac just because you're not using them, you prefer to keep things minimal and simple and squeaky clean, well, let's once again go to the Finder and let's go find the Valhalla Delay plugin. Many plugin developers don't provide any sort of application to uninstall their plugins in their apps. So in this case, I would just right click and move the Valhalla Delay to the trash. But in the case of developers that do provide an app for managing their plugins, I recommend that you use that app. So I'm gonna open up Slate Digital Connect. I'll go right up here to the three dots and just uninstall. Right, so the FGX has now been uninstalled. Let me now quit Logic and reopen it to see what happened. All right, so I closed Logic, I reopened. Let's try to load those plugins. All right, so we still see the FGX as an option. If I try to open the plugin though, it seems I've confused Logic Pro. In this case, I most likely need to restart my Mac. So Logic Pro notices that a change has occurred behind the scenes. And in that case, we won't see the FGX or Valhalla delay as options to use. All right, I restarted my Mac. Let's take a look now. All right, so we don't see Slate or Valhalla in the options here for recent plugins to use. I don't see the Valhalla folder. If we go to Slate, all right, so we have no FGX to use. If I go up to Logic Pro, down to Settings, and the Plugin Manager, under Valhalla, we no longer see the Valhalla delay. And under Slate Digital, there is no FGX. So now Logic has registered, hey, these plugins are no longer here. One last thing I wanna show you is a free app, at least apparently for the time being, called the Audio Plugin Uninstaller from the developer Wide Blue Sound. Apparently this is free for only a limited time, but this is a fantastic application for managing your plugins and all the other stuff that comes with your plugins. Some plugins can install quite a bit of stuff on your Mac system, way beyond just the plugin itself or even presets. And with the audio plugin uninstaller, it's as simple as just typing in the plugin you're thinking of and then deleting it. Right out of the gate, you can see even though I uninstalled the FGX2 and the Valhalla Delay, there still seems to be some residue or mirage of the plugin still on my Mac. So first I could select just a single instance of one of these plugins or the details related to the plugin, or by holding Command or Shift, I could select multiples. From here, I could choose to view these 11 packages. All right, so we can see that some of this stuff has already been uninstalled, most of which, but some aspects may have not been uninstalled. Now, thankfully, Audio Plugin Uninstaller will determine if other plugins across your Mac are using the same files and it'll make sure not to delete those files. So I'm gonna go ahead and uninstall. All right, so I'm not getting back a whole bunch of space, but I'm just getting rid of stuff I'm no longer using. Let's go ahead and proceed with the uninstall. All right, so this is what's been removed. Awesome. Now for a plugin currently installed, I'm going to select all these instances of the FET76 from Arturia. Let's view it. This is everything that's gonna be deleted. Quite a bit of stuff, right? I mean, look at all that. Holy cow. Let's go ahead and uninstall. All right, and click OK. So that's everything you need to know about installing, managing, and uninstalling plugins on your Mac. If this video has been helpful for you, please subscribe to the channel, Why Logic Per Rules. And be sure to check out the links in the description below. I'll include a link to the Why Blue Sound website for the audio plugin uninstaller application if you want to download it. Again, free for a limited time. And of course, I include links to free templates, PDFs, and other guides. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week. Take care.